The title of the lesson today, Seize the Day. Seize the day. There is too much life to be lived for you to hit the snooze button. In fact, I believe it is seize the day, not snooze the day. That was Hal Elrod. Life. Ride it until the wheels fall off. That's Martin Lawrence. Y'all didn't know. Jesus says in John 10, 10, he comes to bring us life and life to the full. And some of us look at the scripture, we go, life to the full, that means it's going to be awesome. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be incredible all the time. Life to the full, surely by Jesus means it's going to be awesome all the time. But that's not what the scripture says. It just says life to the full. Now, I'll tell you one thing about being a disciple of Jesus, a follower, a true follower of Jesus. I'll tell you one thing right now. It ain't boring. I'll tell you one thing else. It ain't a dud. I'll tell you one thing else. It ain't dead. I'll tell you one thing else. It ain't slow. I'll tell you one thing else. There's always something to do. Can I get a witness from the Phoenix congregation today? Let's pray to God. God, thank you for this time together. We pray, God, that your spirit moves. God, that we will hear your words and it will transform our lives. That our pride will be put aside. That our arrogance will be put aside. That we will have humble hearts before the living God. Pray, God, that as we're moved today, that we will make radical decisions that we have radical repentance and do your will. God, pray we seize the moment, seize the day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Today's sermon is on how short life is, but the hope we have in Jesus. You know, I preached at funerals over the past 26 years that I've been a disciple here. I've been with several people, several people as they went off into eternity. I've dealt with death. It's part of the job. But these last five years or so have been kind of tough to, because I've dealt with uh, a lot of different deaths. Did you know that the pandemic didn't increase death? No, it just speeds it up because we're all going to die. It's interesting during the pandemic, people who seemed healthy and strong one day were gone a week later. The way that this COVID had hit was so random. Some older folks got a sneeze and cough, maybe run a little fever, and then they're okay. And then you have a young person and they get extremely sick and vice versa, things just didn't make sense. An old friend told me one time, he'd rather preach at funerals than weddings. Well, let me tell you something right now, not me. You know, it's not that I don't like, dislike preaching at funerals, uh, it really is a great opportunity to share with people and try to help them through a really difficult time. You know, also I count it an honor to get to bring a message of hope to some who may not normally come to church. But the more I deal with death, the more I realize that life is really very fragile. It can be taken away in an instance. Here today, gone tomorrow. None of us have any guarantee of another heartbeat or another breath. See, sometimes as a younger, younger person, you think, well, I'm going to wake up tomorrow. I'm going to get up the next day. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And we just take life for granted. Do we not? Like this morning, I didn't wake up and think about death. You with me here? Here's how fragile life really is. Do you know what animal is responsible for the deaths of more people than any other? Is it a snake? Who said mosquito? You're correct. It is a mosquito. Okay, Ms. okay, Mr. Smarty Pants. Do you know how many people? Do you know how many people a year die from a mosquito bite? How many people die? Seven hundred and twenty-five thousand people per year die from the disease carried by the mosquito. That's how fragile our life really is. 
a tiny creature that we want to smack and get, this little, little sucker, this little sucker can end your life. And we think we're all big and this little mosquito can take you out. It's so annoying that this, this mosquito every year, kills every year than every other animal combined. You know, and in this modern day about diseases that are viral and crawl, uh, others that are bacterial, they crawl inside us of us and begin to do their damage. If our bodies aren't strong enough to fight them off, then they will eventually take over and destroy us. Tiny microorganisms that can bring us down, that is how fragile life is. I want to take a few minutes this morning and look at a man named Job. He was a man who knew a lot about death and heartache. So let's take a minute and look at the book of Job, chapter 14. Job is an incredible man. When things were good, things were good. This man attained wealth. He had wives, children, lives. He had it good. And sometimes in our life, God allows things to happen and it's good. Are you with me here? Sometimes in our life, things that happen are good. Yeah, I like the good times. Can I be honest? I like it when I got an extra buck or two. I like it when there's some gasoline in the car. I like it when I go get something to eat and not worry about how much it is. Are you with me? But sometimes, sometimes life can be pretty sad. Can I, can I speak to the church this morning? Can I, can I preach to you this morning here? Job chapter 14, verse 1. Now, don't trip, Jason. I'm going to go off the King James Version a little bit here. And I might go NIV or ESV. It's all good. We believe in the Bible. Amen. But, you know, I'm going to mix it up a little bit today. So if you're looking at your Bible, it's not King James Version. Don't trip, Alicia. It's going to be okay. He's like, are we in a Baptist church? (laughs) Don't trip. The Bible reads, mortals born of women are a few days and full of trouble. Let me just start off right there. Mortals born of women are a few days and full of trouble. Who, who are mortals? Who's born of women? Everybody. So if you're sitting in your seat today, you're standing walking around this auditorium, this sermon is for you. This scripture is for you. I, I, just, I just came to visit. I was hoping they had some free chocolate in the back. I just came. Well, good news. This sermon is for you. Mortals born of women are few days and full of trouble. They spring up like flowers and wither away, like fleeting shadows. They do not endure. Do you fix your eye on them? Will you bring them before you for judgment? Who can bring that is pure from the impure? No one. A person's days are determined. You have decreed the number of months and have set limits he cannot exceed. So look away from him and let him alone till he has put in his time and like a hired labor. At least there's hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again, and its new shoot will not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground, and its stump die in the soil, yet at the scent of water it will will bud and put forth shoots like a plant. But a man dies and is laid low. He breathes his last breath and is no more. Don't trip. I'm going to break it down for us. Break it down for us. The first thing that Job tells us here is life is short. Man that is born of a woman is a few days. You know, there was a TV show back in the day called Jimmy Kimmel. And Jimmy Kimmel was this late night comedian. He was talking about the death of Don Rickles. And this is what he said. He said, I know it's crazy to say, but he was way too young. You guys, Don Rickles was 90 years old. He was not too young to die. But the fact of the matter is, no one is too young to die. Death is no respecter of persons. Man that is born of woman is a few days. I don't care if you're nine or 90 years old, life is short. Teen, life is short. Campus, life is short. Singles, life is short. Marrieds. Life is short. I don't know how many times I've heard people say, the older you get, the quicker time goes by. I, used to, I didn't used to understand that, but boy, I sure do now. It is the truth. 
I, I'm only 52 years old, and I could tell you it seems just like yesterday I was 25 years old. I felt like it was just yesterday that my son Christian was just a little guy here couldn't even talk. It felt like it was just yesterday I was teaching him how to play football and baseball. Seems like just yesterday that he was in high school as a quarterback. Seems like just yesterday. I'm like, bro, where did the time go, man? If you're a parent, you look at your kids and you go, what the heck is going on here? Where did the time go? Children tell us where time is going, does it not? Jiminy Crickets. Think about this. We're closer to the year 2060 than we are back to the 1980s. And I remember the 1980s very well. It's probably the greatest era in my opinion. Wake me up before you go. Some of you got that. Some of you didn't. The parents got it. The kids are like, yeah, there you go. You know, you think as you grow older, time would slow down. These bodies sure don't, do they? They don't heal up as fast as they used to. These joints don't bend like they used to. This hair falls out or turns gray. The skin gets brown, spots on it, and we just slow down. You know, there was a time when I'd ride in a pool on my skateboard and I'd fall down, jump back up, and hit the next lip. Now I fall down, I just lay there. I don't even go that high. I'm just like, I, and I lay on the ground. I go, why am I doing this? This is not cool. This hurts. And I'll lay there, and I don't care who's looking either. I'll just lay there. I'll, all the kids are just, I'm like, they're going to feel this later. But it's real. As you get older, things don't work the same. Amen? So what should we do with these few days that we have left? You might be saying to yourself, self, what should we be doing with ourselves? Some of you might be saying, enjoy yourselves. But is that what the Bible teach? That's what the Old Testament teaches. People are indulging themselves and doing what they wanted to do, right? Ooh, who am I talking to right now? You know, most of us don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> Justin, real quick. And then, he go, and then he, goes, he goes, oh, I'm a Christian now. But the truth is, most of us don't like to be told what to do. But I would submit to say that when the Bible says something directly to do, we can do that with a, a good conscience. Are you with me here? So let's hear what the Apostle Paul says here in Ephesians 5, verse 14. We're going to get into some meat now, okay? You're like, man, this is a very morbid subject here. Welcome to church. Welcome to real, real things here. It's like, well, I'm, I don't want to think about death. Well, maybe you should. I don't want to think about the afterlife. Well, maybe you should. Are you with me here? This is why it is said, Ephesians 5, verse 14, this is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. You with me here? The Bible teaches that we got a few things we should do and we need to do. Number one, we need to wake up. Number two, we need to rise up. Okay. Number three, we need to step up. And number four, we need to pay up. Oh, got quiet real quick. Ooh. But it's not what you think. We're going to get to that. We got to wake up. We need to wake up to the condition of our own salvation, our own soul, and to the people around us and their salvation and their souls. We need to be aware of the lost souls that are around us. Don't be fooled. They're on their way to hell. It's a real place. We need to love like Jesus even when it hurts. Wait, you mean to tell me I need to love like Jesus even when it hurts? But, but my life is hurting, bro. What about me? I was offended. I was hurt. Things happened to me. You expect me to love while I'm going through this? I didn't sign up for that, Jesus. When I said Jesus is Lord, I meant Jesus is Lord, but not that. Come on, that can't be real. I got to put myself in check. 
Why? What about you? We need to wake up. Even when it hurts, we need to love like Jesus. But that brother hurt me. That sister hurt me. How about all the people you hurt? So many people have themselves fooled. They think they're good enough, smart enough, rich enough to make it to heaven. They got enough scripture knowledge. They've been to the right church. They believe when all the while their days are growing shorter. Wake up to the condition of the world. It's getting more evil and more evil. Just walk outside. Just drive around the corner. Just look around and you'll see really how evil this is. You could be in the confinements of your own home, turn on the TV, and it's just wicked. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm like trying to be a good guy. I'm trying. And I turn the TV on. I'm like, what the heck, man? That's probably why I just watch sports. You guys are always like, well, he's watching sports. Yeah, I watch. I got to keep my head pure right. Everything I turn on is garbage. You got the preacher sleeping with the so-and-so and the so-and-so sleeping with so-and-so. The preacher's kids are jokes. The Christianity is a joke. All this craziness and wickedness. But maybe that's just only on my TVs. Maybe that's only my internet provider. Maybe it's not yours. Matthew 24. I think we can all look around and see what's happening. Matthew 24 is an incredible scripture. It's a scripture about Jesus. And the disciples are coming to him and they're looking at these buildings. And Jesus is like, hey, the end is near. The end is going to happen. There's going to be rumors of war. There's going to be false prophets. There's going to be a bunch of craziness and lunacy. And they're going to tell you, Jesus is here. Like, Don't believe them. Don't believe them. He tells them that there's going to be a bunch of things going on. And he goes, only my father in heaven knows the time. And he goes, he goes, he says, if a thief is going to come to your house, wouldn't you be ready for him? Wouldn't it be wise to be ready for him? You know, when I was a little bit younger, my mom, my mom is incredible. She raised seven of us. And my mom, there was, a, there was a night stalker going around. I don't know if you remember night stalker. Richard Ramirez, right? He was a serial killer. And he would jump into people's homes and kill them. And we only had TV back then. We didn't have internet and stuff like that. So it was word of mouth. And all the neighborhood was scared. And my mom is gangster. My mom used to get, my mom, my mom got these strings with cans that would jingle. She put them over all the windows, all the doors. And if anybody came, she'd go, clink, clink. She got the kitchen knife all Chucky styled out. She go, if he, if he comes in here, he going to get it. He better, Richard Ramirez better not come in my house. Night Stalker better not come in my house. He going to get some of this. <laughs> some of you met my mom. They're like, uh-huh, Lydia, uh-huh. But my mom was protecting seven little kids. And she was having her house prepared. And the Bible teaches, Jesus is teaching here that we need to be prepared. If you know the thief is coming to take you out, wouldn't you be prepared? How come some of us don't get prepared? How come we act like, if the Bible teaches that this is happening, how come some of us don't get prepared? How come we don't get prepared for Jesus to come back? Maybe we just don't believe it. It's right there in the scriptures. I know it's true, but we don't live like it. Yeah, like, who's he talking to, man? I just came to visit. I just want to hear a nice talk. We're talking about death and Jesus coming back? Holy smokes. The Bible says at the end of Matthew 24, the master of that servant will come on a day when he doesn't expect him and an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with hypocrites where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There is a judgment for the ones that do not accept the Lord. There is judgment for the ones that do not prepare for him. Not because I said so, because what God says. We need to wake up to the fact that Jesus Christ is coming again And listen, every day is one step closer. I personally don't think it's going to be long. I think it's impending, and it could happen at any time. That's how we should live. Then we need to rise up. We need to rise up from the dead. 
Every one of us, we're dead in our transgressions, our, our sin, were we not? We must all come to the point in our life where we realize the condition we're in at and let Jesus give us life. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. There comes a point in your life where you have to say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I know what I should be doing. I know I should be, I know I should be serving the almighty God. I know it. I know it. And whether we're young or old or we prolonged it, our pride, our arrogance, everything that comes with it, we just will not submit to him. And God is somebody that you do not want to mess with. But you don't know my situation. You don't know my situation here. I might have time. I have a little bit of time. You do not want to mess with the living God. You think you got, that, that's the problem with a lot of us. We think we have time. We take it for granted. We're like, I got time. I got time. Are you guys with me here? We need to rise up to the job God has for each one of us. We need to rise up and be about our father's business. We need to rise up and get to work. And we need to step, step up. Are you guys with me here? We need to look around. We need to be smart. We need to not be foolish. We need to use good judgment. I tell you, the devil is trying to take us out. There's an adversary, and he is trying to take us out. You think he's happy that we're having this sermon together, this, this charge together, and we're with each other, and we're trying to praise the Almighty God? You think he's fired up about this? Some of you have thoughts right now that are sinful. Some of you can't wait to get out of here to go to your sin. Hello? How long y'all going to be here? How long we going to be? <sighs> Not one of us is safe. He is ready at any time to move in and destroy our lives. Our job is to be cautious and be wise. And then we need to pay up. It's redeeming time. What does redeem mean? It means to gain or regain possession of something in exchange for payment. We need to pay up. Make use of the time that we have been given. I'm talking about T-I-M-E, time. Do you know what the most valuable possession is that you can give to someone? It's your time. Your time. You're allotted a certain amount. None of us knows how much we have. So when you give someone your time, you're giving them something that you can't get any more of. Time is valuable. To some of you, time is not valuable. Why? Because you're not busy. So you're like, oh, I got time. I can do this. I got this. Because you're idle. And you may have lazy hands. But if your time is valuable and you give it to people, you should respect that. If time is really valuable to you and valuable to others, you would not be late. Time is valuable. There was a guy named Diamond Rio. He was a singer. You can, you can YouTube it. Probably a handful of us know who that is. I'll be shy. Oh, Tony, Tony knows. He had a song called One More Day. Hear me out, church. Hear me out. One more day. What would you do if you realized you only had one more day to spend with your loved ones? One more day to share faith for Christ? One more day to teach your children what's really important in life? I guarantee you, you wouldn't spend it watching Netflix or be on social media browsing doing nothing. You wouldn't spend it looking at your phone or working extra hours of overtime. You would use that limited time wisely. Now I've got news for you. You may only have one more day. One thing is for sure, you only have a certain amount of time. Use it wisely because life is short. James 4, 13, pretty clear as day here. You wanna hear something direct? You wanna hear something direct? Do you wanna hear God talk to you today? Okay, 
Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, make money. I'm going to go to my class. I'm going to take another class my freshman year, my sophomore year. I'm going to finish up work. I'm going to get a promotion. I want to get a new car. I'm going to get a house. I'm going to live here. I'm going to, I got, and then I got, and then, Verse 14, why you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. So wake up, rise up, step up and pay up. Man that is born of a woman is a few days full of trouble. Full of trouble. You know, this life can be pretty sad. It can be pretty sad. If I'm being honest, can I be honest with you guys here? Without God, without my, my Savior, I'm an evil, wicked person. One of the biggest sins of my life is I can be very callous. That means I just don't care. I can really harden my heart to a point where I just don't care. Can you relate? Some of you are gentle, so it doesn't apply to all. But but I can get to a point where I just don't care. Life can be very sad. And if there was no God, there was no salvation, there was no heaven and hell, if I didn't believe any of that stuff, I can understand depression in a mean way. I can understand even people committing suicide because the world becomes so hard, I can understand them wanting to exit. I don't agree with it, okay? But I understand it. You understand here? People are living like this every single day. As Job sits there, his children are all dead. His wife has told him to curse God and die. He has absolutely zero support from her. He's lost all his wealth. Nothing is stable. His so-called friends tell him how wicked he is and that God is punishing him. Now his health is gone as he sits there in total misery with boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And this is what he says. Life is only a few days long, and those few days are nothing but misery. You ever feel like just life is just full of misery? You're like, things were so good. What happened? You lose your job. Oh, my gosh. You get a D minus in your class and you get dropped from that class. Oh my gosh. You lost some money. Oh my God. Are you with me here? Here's a man boils from head to toe who had it, lost it all. And he's sitting there going, this is just horrible. That's his reality. Paul puts it this way in 1 Corinthians 15. You write this stuff down. 1 Corinthians 15, 1. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are, we are of all men most miserable. And you might be saying to yourself, no. Self, you ready for this? How can God allow these terrible things to happen? Come on, here we go. Here we go. How can God allow these terrible things to happen? Why do bad things happen to good people? I've heard people curse God over children with cancer. I've heard them. How can this happen? If there's an almighty God that's so loving, how does he let this happen? Why? Good question. But listen, I want to tell you something. Friends and family, listen to me right now. This is not our home. This is not our home. Life down here is short, but we all have an eternity ahead of us. Can I get a witness from the congregation? In Hebrews 11, the faith chapter talks about many of the great men of the Old Testament. And in the verses 13 to 16, it says this about them. Listen to me. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. You see what it says there in verse 13? They confess what? Did they confess that this world was all there is, so you better make the best of it? Forget tomorrow, live it up today? No. No, they confess that this life is only temporary. 
They were strangers, pilgrims, traveling through this land, heading for an eternal home. Is that how we live today? If we live like we know that there's an eternity that we go to, guess what? We live a little differently. We walk with a little different swagger. When things come up and things arise, we walk a little differently. And the reason why some of us have been going sideways lately is because we, not, not we have not been fixed on Jesus. We have not been thinking about our heavenly home. Too many times, us disciples live like there's all there is today, and that's that. No, we have a home in heaven. We have a house builder and a maker. His name is God. We ought to live like it. This world is only a few days long. Those few days are full of trouble. In verse 2, a flower that is beautiful then is cut down and is soon wilted. A shadow that is, is there one instant and gone the next. This is a perfect example of mankind. In verse 3, Job speaks about how we are nothing compared to God. He goes, I understand who I am before you, God. Psalms 8, 4, what is a man that thou art mindful of him? He says, God, we're nobody, and yet you think about us. You love us. You made us. You call us sons and daughters. Amen. You're so great. Do we, do, we, do we talk to God like that? Do we have that relationship with God? Do we have this fear and reverence of God that we're so excited that the living God, the breathing God is almighty and we, we serve him? And he accepts us as sons and daughters? Whew. So many people today think they are equal with God. People today become more and more intelligent to the point that they feel that they are God. He tells us we're all born sinners who can bring a clean thing out of the unclean. Not one. Job in his despair that maybe God demands something of him that he just cannot do. I'm going to tell you something. There's no way I can be righteous on my own and get to heaven. There's no way you can be righteous on your own and get to heaven. We need a savior. We need somebody to intermingle for us. Why? Because we're jacked up people. Are you with me here? In Matthew 6, 25, Jesus tells us not to worry. If Jesus tells us not to worry, why do we worry? He says, what do you get from it? You're going to get some more hair, Stacy? What do you get from worry, he says? Wrinkles, ulcers. Nothing good comes from worrying, right? He says, I got you. Are you with me here? You know, when the, when the body dies, the body dies. You can't put a new heart into it, a new liver. It decays, it's dead, done. But the spirit will live on. Are you guys with me here? Yeah. Ecclesiastes 12.7, we're going to end here. Ecclesiastes 12.7, this is Solomon. Solomon considered the wisest man that ever lived. So we probably want to listen to this. Smarter than all your professors. Smarter than the CEOs of all the companies. He says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return to God who gave it. Are you guys with me here? The Bible is reading here that we're all going to return to God. Everybody, all of us are going to return to God. A few years back, I went to, uh, I was in the L.A. County Jail visiting somebody, prayed with them. He told me, hey, I have court. It's going to be on the fifth floor. Uh, can, you, can you just be there for me? Yeah, no problem. So I'm in the courthouse. I go up and I go into the room and they close the doors. And I was like, this is the wrong room. This is the wrong courthouse. But I couldn't get out because the proceedings were starting. The court proceedings were starting. So I look at the jurors. And I look at this young man who was on trial. And he looked just like any other guy. If you've seen him on the street, he just looks like a regular Joe. You would never think that he was in there for murder. And as we broke off, I went out some time later. I found out that he was convicted of murder and he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison. And I thought about that. And I thought about the judgment of God for all of us here. And I thought how sad it would be if some of us were on the wrong side of his judgment. 
The Bible says that our soul is all going to return to God. Whether you believe it or not, it's going to happen. The Bible teaches that every knee shall confess. It's going to happen. We will be held accountable for our actions. Are you with me here? Yes, the man giveth up the spirit, and where is he? Where will you be in a thousand years from now? Where will you be in a thousand years from now? The choice is up to you. There is hope in Jesus Christ. I want to challenge you guys today. Today. To get right with the law. I'm not talking about the Phoenix law. I'm talking about the law of God. If you don't know or you've been playing around with salvation, it's time to do whatever it takes to get right with God. Time is short. Time is short. Don't let your pride, don't let your arrogance, don't let you think you know everything, don't let you think that you're too young. Don't let you think that you're too old. Don't, te- don't let you think that you, you're too messed up. The Bible teaches in Corinthians that today is the day of salvation. In my time of favor, I have heard you. Today, Phoenix Church, it's time to make some radical decisions. It's time to make some incredible decisions to follow Jesus wholeheartedly. You don't want to be found guilty by the Almighty God. Seize the day. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, let the lion roar.